For a true generalist, nothing is off the menu. Sometimes survival is all about versatility, and if you have an adventurous palate, there are more resources at your disposal. For one Japanese canine, finding enough food to last through the winter is a matter of life and death, so being picky isn't an option. But what happens when the tanuki comes across a food that may threaten his life, death, and taxonomy? Ready? Yes. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I am Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube. And thank you to Brian for the creation of this week's artwork. To check it out, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at LD Taxonomy or visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And today on our 200th episode, we're talking about an adorable video game character. A few, t- a couple times over, but he's also an actual animal. Yes. I did not, it's, it's, it's been spelled a couple different ways. So that's why it threw me off. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, should we do some housekeeping before we talk, talk about the animal? Uh, sure. Yeah. So this is our 200th episode. Let's little, little, I need confetti. Where's my confetti? I've got, I've got, <laughs> uh, sticky notes. There, there you go. go. It's paper and there's I a lot it. of it. Colored That's paper all that fall- it requires falling. to be confetti. Uh, so that, that means a couple things. The first thing is that you might be watching this with your eyeballs Instead of with your ear balls. That's right. Well, with, with both of your head balls. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that either. Both pairs. Uh, you, you will be able to watch this full episode on YouTube, but then in the future, only partial episodes or clips. Because. The future episode, right. We are. So. We've been doing this podcast for coming up on three years now. Um, I think, right? I think it's been three years. 200 weeks. That's a, no, that's four years. I think we're c- getting close to four years in January. It'll be four years. Um, and I, it's, it's, not, it's not expensive to run a podcast. No. Uh, but it's not free either. So, what we did was we created a Patreon account. Uh, and if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a, a site that is appended, or a, a platform that's appended to our website. So, you can visit it, visit it at ldtaxonomy.com slash Patreon. And uh, if you feel so inclined, no pressure, but uh, anyone who does feel inclined can donate uh, to the podcast. And that helps keep the light keep the lights on helps pay for uh the software that we use the uh, hosting platforms that we use um any you know equipment that we might need um and uh gives us a little little spur of motivation to to (laughs) (laughs) to, uh make this make this happen we're going to do it regardless but um it's it'd be really helpful uh if you feel so moved to uh to donate that will be on ldtaxonomy.com slash Patreon. Uh, people who do donate will have access to all of our full video uh, episodes. Uh, people who do donate in this, I think the second tier, it comes in tiers. Uh, first tier, anybody who donates will get a shout out from us specifically on an episode. Um, and then I, the second tier of the donation um, w- those uh, donators will have access to our full video episodes that we'll have uploaded. Uh, so just clips on YouTube just to whet the appetite. But if you want to see our lovely and beautiful faces while we talk about animals for 30 minutes or give or take some, um, then you can uh, donate. And yeah, that, that helps everyone all around. Also, we have a new T-shirt on our Teespring page, which is 
Well, you can get to it uh, at ldtaxonomy.com slash taxonomy tees, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and it's the, um, the what do you call it? It's not album art. It's, it's, our, cover uh, art. Our, it's our Apple Podcasts cover art. Yeah. Designed Which by... We've had for a long time. Your wife, I believe, right? That's right. Designed by Johanna. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. It's cool to look at and cool to wear. We got a bunch yeah. of good designs on there as well. Um, if you haven't checked it out, uh, like our Ursine Sunset. Which t-shirt. is right here, if you can see it. If you are watching this on YouTube, then you'll see, see that Joey's wearing it. Um, and then, you know, what we're going to be putting up new and cool things because it's just, a, it would be a shame to not put Brian's artwork on a t-shirt. It is that good. Um, so we're going to be taking our favorites and putting them on our chest. Just 200 of them, 200 different shirts. We could, we, we should probably do that. We'll just do, <laughs> we'll do one called the bestiary. And then we'll take all 200 of them and make them small and put them <laughs> all across one shirt. Um, and it's just a mosaic of our faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Jeff Goldblum's face. That's better. Yeah. That's usually better. Uh, that's a usually better answer to most most face related questions. Um, but yeah, is that. Is that everything? There's uh, the last thing um, is in honor of our 200th episode, the first 200 people. No. (laughs) (laughs) That's your first. (laughs) What have you signed us up for? First 10. Just kidding. (laughs) The first 10 people to email us or tweet us their favorite animal will get. Should we just say a goodie? In the mail? Or do yes. you be more specific? Um, yeah, we'll say a prize. A prize. A tangible prize. Free prize. Non-food based. So if you have a peanut allergy, don't worry about it. We will not take this prize and dunk it in peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have a peanut butter allergy, you might be able to put peanuts in it or on it. Very true. Man. Who knows? If you're so inclined. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, uh, you can email us at ldtaxonomy at gmail.com or tweet at us at ldtaxonomy, which is our handle, uh, your favorite animal. Tell us what floats your boat in the yeah. kingdom animalia. And uh, and the first 10 responses we get, we'll get... We'll send you, we'll send you a, a neat little LDT prize to show your LDT pride. <laughs> nice. Okay. So that is that. Do you want to tell what video game character slash animal are we talking about? All right. Yes. Let's get into the episode we are talking about this week. The Tanuki. The Tanuki, a.k.a. The Japanese raccoon dog. Yeah. Which is it's just raccoon dog. Yeah. Um, but there are raccoon dogs in Europe and East Asia. China. We're talking about the one in Japan. Um, in Nippon. But it, you can wear the Tanuki suit in, in Mario. Yes, Mario, I think, three, 3D World. Mario, th- I think in Mario 2 or Mario 3, you can wear it. Oh, oh yeah, it's an old. Actually, yeah, that's pretty old. Um, if you've ever been playing Mario and you're like, "Hey, look, I'm a raccoon," you're you're actually a tanuki. Or you're yeah. wearing a, or you're wearing the the skin of one. <laughs> but and it's allowing you to float. <laughs> a full living tanuki is in Animal Crossing. Tom Nook is a tanuki. Sure, he owns the store and he owns you, that, or at I least your mortgage. I I didn't realize there was slavery in uh, in Animal Crossing. Slave to the system. Yeah, to the rat race. <laughs> to <laughs> the lo- Tanuki race. I love me a game that is just simulates the rat race. If you ch- choose to play as a rat, I suppose. Can you play as animals in Animal Crossing? No. Nope. 
what? <laughs> You're the only human in Animal Town. Zero out of ten stars. <laughs> Unacceptable. You live with animals, though. So I live with animals in real life. What's the point if I can't be one? You get to own an island, I guess. I do know that. Um, in the newest one, yeah. But yes, uh, Tom. Who? Nope. Tom, Tom. Tom Nook. Yeah. Yeah. He's Tanuki. Um, Tom there Nooky. Is... <laughs> there's also uh, a there's also a video game called Tanuki Sunset, which is. Did he... Joey, you tell me what you think Tanuki Sunset's all about. Don't look it up. Is... Oh, I wasn't looking up the video game. I was looking up other things with the Tanuki in it. Uh, I'm going to guess it's an old school video game. Is it just a racing game? You're pretty close. It's uh okay. I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, pop the bubble of suspense. It's a, it's, it's a racing skateboarding game where you, uh, you know, curve, and grind along the neon synthwave highways of, I presume, to California or something like that. Are you a raccoon dog? Yes, you are a tanuki. Oh, okay. You are a tanuki riding a skateboard on a highway, and everything is purple and neon and and pink and stuff like that. Oh, and it looks kind of fun. Beautiful. <laughs> it looks like maybe an iPhone game or something like that. I have not played it, but it actually looks like you're just a raccoon. This doesn't look like a tanuki. I think people just get them mix, mixed up a lot. Yeah, it looks it's like a called... North American raccoon. But anyway, this so this is called the raccoon dog. We're also going to call it here the well-endowed evanescent enigma. <laughs> She'll get it too later. Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the tricky transforming trash panda. Okay. I'm sure I'm sure you are uh, eager for an explanation, but it's going to have to wait okay. because it's time for science. We have to oh, make room time. for science. It's science time. Um, let's taxonomize this. It's in a kingdom you know, love and are in It is Animalia. The phylum is Chordata. The class is Mammalia. This is raccoon dog. Um, the order is Carnivora because it eats stuff. <laughs> that is all that is alive and not plants. Um, the family is Canidae. So this is a dog. It's not a raccoon. It's not very closely related to raccoons at all. Um, it its coloring kind of resembles a raccoon, but that's about it. Yep. Uh, raccoons are more like lemurs. They're related to like kinkajous and and stuff like that. Um, Which also is, seems wrong. I mean, they've got like they're they've got little monkey hands. And, no, they uh, don't. They don't have opposable thumbs. I guess you're right, but they use their hands like monkeys do. Like they're very dexterous with their hands. Um, and they climb. They spend a lot of time in trees. They got long, uh, ring-tailed tails. <laughs> yeah, I guess they do uh, have rings, ring tails. Ring, ring tails. Um, so yeah, they are close, more closely related to lemurs than they are to the tanuki uh but tanukis are related to dogs like hyenas and um uh jackals and dogs Um, i saw that they were most closely related to foxes i can see it the genus is uh oh my i should practice this i always say that uh nick to rudy's nick I don't see how the, they're more closely related to lemurs because lemurs are in a different order. Raccoons are in this in no, like, carnivora um, along with the tanuki. Maybe not true lemurs, but oh, the like the the not what is it called the kawadi or the co koti the passamaquoddy. What? <laughs> The ringtails, yes, uh, yes. Kawadis, Kinkajus, 
Not ringtail lemurs, just ringtails, which are like, yeah, 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 yeah. Kawadis, kinkachus, olingos. Yeah, these things look like lemurs. They have uh, dexterous tails. Um, and they spend a lot of time in trees. They have de- dexterous fingers as well. Little mousy faces. They're not primates. Or yeah. Close to primates, but um, they are, or they're mustelids. They're like weasels, but in the, in the, uh, they're like tree weasels. Treasels, yeah. Trees. <laughs> that's what that's what raccoons are. They're just treasels. <laughs> Um, but the 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 tanuki or the raccoon dog is nothing like that. It is a dog. Uh, so the genus is Nycterudes. The the uh, species is Viverinus. So Nycterudes Viverinus is the binomial no- nomenclature. So since we are in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show: critter groups. Uh, the part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question, that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal, or what is the collective noun, or what is the term of venery? We do not have one for the tanuki, but we do have one for raccoons, which they're not even closely related to. <laughs> um, but raccoons have several interesting uh collective nouns, so if we ever end up doing the raccoon, then uh, I'll have it's a it's a uh, a wellspring of of good content. Um, so we're going to do raccoons because it looks like a raccoon and that's about all we got. If you saw a group of raccoons, would you say it's A, a mischief of raccoons, B, a gaze of raccoons, C, a band of raccoons, or D, a crowd of raccoons? See, I feel like I'm at a disadvantage uh, now because you can see my face. Run the I'm, first one by me again. A mischief. What was the second one? Then? Gaze. Oh, yeah. And I'm really bad at games like lying or detecting liar games like uh, uh, like Liar's Dice or um, the one the bull (laughs) or um, Mafia or anything like that. Like I'm just out immediately. So. Is it band sounds right, but is that just because they're called bandits? Because they have bandit masks. I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna put on my poker face. Mischief really works well. The one that's the odd man out is gaze, but that could just be a red herring. What was the last one? Crowd. Let me go with a mm, gaze. Final answer. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, You're correct. You the other, it. the rest of them were like, that would make sense. And I this thought, I, like, yeah, I, I thought that, that, that was a, I, I think that was a well-crafted one. It made you think about all of them. Yeah. And then you ended up with the right answer. Yeah. So. Uh, gaze is definitely the the odd one out. Now you know that that's a good tactic to like, if if you find one that is, oh, that makes sense, do two more that make sense, and then one that is just completely ridiculous. Yeah. I should have done like a, a convergence or something like that. <laughs> like something <laughs> way out of left a field. A confluence. I think we've already I think that we've already done that or I've already included it as a um a fake one as a fake one yeah but are you ready to hear what this thing looks like sure not raccoons tanukis we're back to tanukis um so if uh, we haven't already made it abundantly clear this looks like a raccoon mm-hmm. but a a pretty close cross between a raccoon and a pomeranian <laughs> yeah kind of like it took Very me a little bit after face. looking at pictures. Like, what kind of dogs does this look like? It looks like a pomeranian. Like it's very poofy. It's a poofy little pomeranian with his adorable little snout and the skinny little legs and a uh, very extremely puffy coat. Uh the ears it is are very sp- poofy. They are apparently they look way bigger than they are because of the poof. Yeah, same with Pomeranians. Have you ever picked up a Pomeranian 
and you're like, I'm you, your hand just sinks all the way down, and you're like, oh wow, there is a <laughs> where slender, is he? There's like a weasel in here. <laughs> it just passes all the way through like a cloud. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it's just uh, it's a ghost ghost dog. Um, so Tanuki. What? Ghosts of Tanuki. Ah, it's yeah. close, good. I guess. Yeah. Um, unlike a Pomeranian, the ears are smaller and rounded, and the tail is long, furry, and spotted. Uh, I've seen some like cartoons and stuff like that where the Tanuki's tail is ringed, and I think that in Mario, the Tanuki's tail is ringed. I couldn't find a single actual Tanuki with a ringed tail. It was spotted, like blotchy at best, uh, but never like defined rings like a raccoon. So I think that's where like the visual, um, like someone says, "Oh, raccoon dog," and then they just put like a kind of a dog like uh, raccoon cartoon up there and call it a day. Um, but it turns out looking up. Uh, tanuki tail on google lands you in furry territory pretty fast whoa Tanu- apparently tanuki is a very common uh choice interesting <laughs> yes and also uh, not well actually it's interesting no matter what even disturbing just, things are interesting um their fur is light brown it's flecked, but it's flecked with dark brown. Uh, it has darker spots on its eyes, like a raccoon, uh, but also on its chest, legs, and tail. Some are uh, much lighter, almost white, and they're very rare. But they're not albino, so it's just a very rare uh, color variant. Um, in short, they are small and cute. They're very cute. Yeah. Uh, but, but how short? How small? How small how is it? Small. Let's find out. Welcome to the beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show that's uh, introduced by you when you send in an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words "Measure Up" into ldtaxonomy.com. It's also fun for the whole family. I think I forgot to say. Uh, we don't have a new measure up intro this week, but we have something better. Do we? We do. A secret little surprise, unless you read the email this week. No, I have not. Special 200th episode secret surprise. Yeah. Without further ado, the listeners' favorite part of the show. Happy 200th episode to you. Happy 200th episode to you. Happy 200th episode. Life, death, and taxonomy. Happy 200th episode to you. Musically very good. That was um, that was impressive because uh, most of the things don't roll off the tongue very well, like life, death, and taxonomy. (laughs) I responded. That must have been hard work with all the extra syllables. Uh, But that was from Joy and the kids again, putting the team on their back. Joy, in particular, doing a lot of the work in that situation, especially the Uh, harmony work. Yes. But that there you go, two hundred episodes. That that was uh, spectacular. It was indeed. Thank you, Joy and the kids, for thank you uh, to singing the Calvin, most difficult rendition Julia. of that. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, thank you to Calvin, Julia, and Laura. Okay, mm-hmm. are you ready? Let's talk length. They're forty-five to sen- seventy-one centimeters. Or 18 to 28 inches if you only speak American. How many Tanukis go into the Tokyo Sky Tree, the world's tallest tower? The world's tallest tower. 
Yeah. So is that that is that that yellow and red thing? I don't think it's that color. So we know that the Burj Khalifa is the tallest building skyscraper, but towers that are like very thin and have a wide base can be much, much taller and it's easier to build them high. So like the the tallest towers are sometimes are usually um, like radio towers and stuff like that. But oh, I like you have like the twin towers or the Sears Tower, which yeah, is yeah, like, it's not that kind of tower. Are, those are also skyscrapers. This is a tower tower, but people can go inside it. Here's a hint: the observation tower includes high speed lifts to take people to the top. When it opened in 2012, visitors waited more than a week to get tickets to the opening. It also functions as a radio and television broadcasting tower. Are you sure it's not that red and white thing? Like I don't know what color it is. Oh, you didn't, you didn't even it look looks, it up? No, it, yeah, it's gray. It's gray? Yeah. Oh. I know in Japan there's a red and white tower that's pretty well-known there. Um, this thing, like, if you look up a picture of it, it's humorously tall. It's dwarfing the other, the other buildings around it. Um, it's humorously tall. You look at it and you're just like, huh, <laughs> that's tall. <laughs> Those other buildings are so small. How embarrassing for them. Um, I don't know. 2000 feet. Yeah, Two, um, Empire State buildings. Oh, is that a thousand feet? Okay. That's too much. It seems like a lot. I thought it was a thousand feet. Um, the Burj Khalifa, isn't it like 1600 feet? It's 1250 feet. The Empire State Building? Yeah. Hmm. 1400 to the tip of the antenna thing. I'm going with 2,000. 2,000, 2K feet. Divided by what? Two and a... The answer is 857 Tanugis. All <laughs> tied end to end would be a great uh, escape ladder from the top of that tower. Oh, I was mistaken. The to- This is not taller. This the Burj Khalifa is taller. I was, um, I was kind of wondering. So this uh, must be like 18, 1800 feet. Final answer. Um, we're gonna. I'm just gonna bring it right back down to uh, eight hundred, eight hundred Tanukis. What was your original? Eight fifty seven. Okay, the correct answer was eight hundred and ninety two or eight hundred and ninety one. Tanukis. Oh, the, it's closer to my original answer. The Thank tower God. is 634 meters or 2,080 feet. I was 80 feet off of my original estimate, and then I brought it, <laughs> and then I became 280 feet off of my original. You got scared. You got scared. Yeah, I did. Well, because when Burj Khalifa is uh, 2,700 feet. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have those things memorized. I probably should. I should like just memorize a bunch of uh, facts about particularly mountain heights. The average mountain height. Yeah. Yeah. I should get at least like four or five mountain heights memorized and then like some of the tallest buildings and some of the deepest seas. <laughs> and then the the astronomical units it takes to get to sit different things in the universe. Or yeah, in the solar the, system. The density of neutron stars, all that good stuff. Yeah. All, all, so, all that stuff you can't graduate high school without knowing. Yeah, simple. Let's talk weight. Particularly their summer weight because they they hibernate. So they have to gain a lot of weight for the winter. The dog that hibernates. Yeah. So there's in the summer, there are 60... 60... 
6.5 to 7 kilograms, or 14 to 15 pounds. Quite, quite big for a small thing. It's not really that big, but okay. Like a really chunky puppy, like a chunky pug. Or a, I, think, I think my dog Morph is about that what, that heavy. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. So how many of the world's largest strawberry would the Tanuki have to eat to eat its weight in the world's largest strawberry? Wait, how many of how many it would have to eat multiple of them to eat its weight? Yeah. Okay. This isn't like a James and the Giant Peach situation where it's much bigger than the actual Tanuki. <laughs> um world's largest strawberry. I imagine an abnormally large one would be like size of like your your fists put together like a brain. So I'm gonna say the largest strawberry is the size of a bicycle helmet. That's crazy. Well, well let's let's hear a that's crazy. hint. The the big berry was grown by Mr. Koji Nakeo from Fukuoka, Japan. Sounds right you to watch me. Watch your language. Mr. Nakeo's daughter said it was delicious. I'm sure it was. Which is a concern when things are mutated to be large. Sometimes they don't taste right or they don't taste good. I wouldn't know. Most of our food is with the GMOs is True. mutated to be large or but at they, least volu, vol, voluminous. I th I've heard that like about fish and lobsters too. They're, if you get a particularly large one, sometimes they're not good. I'm going to say that this strawberry weighed a two pounds. So the answer is seven. Seven tanukis. Final answer. What? No, seven. Um, oh yeah, yeah. strawberries. Seven strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's well, correct. That's not correct necessarily. It's just your. Don't play with my correct. emotions like that. <laughs> Final I have no answer? idea how much this means to me. Yeah, seven. Well, that's very disappointing to hear because the correct answer. Is 27. Wow, it's super it's small. It's little. Yeah, the strawberry weighed 250 grams or 8.82 ounces. So it's big for a strawberry. Yeah, but like it's not. Like, it's like this big. Like a big, like your fist. Yeah. You, it was half. You said like brain sized. Yeah. Well, I was, I was using that as like a standard for. Like if I ever walked by a farmer's market and I was like, I would be like, wow, those are some really big strawberries. But then when I think of the biggest strawberry, it's got to be bigger than that. And then they're yeah. dense and full of juice. And I figured that they would be pretty heavy. So two pounds made sense. And I was very wrong. Eight ounces. Ounces are big. Ounces are the heaviest. Yeah. The heaviest things can be weighed in ounces, that's for sure. Neutron star is like an ounce, right? Uh, let's, that's all I got for that. Do you have any quick facts before we get into the thick fact? The quick facts and thick facts. Uh, the <laughs> the uh, Tanuki, or the Japanese raccoon dog, lives, of course, in Japan, specifically near water and uh, in evergreen forests. It is omnivorous. It eats mostly rodents, fish, birds, eggs, lizards, frogs, as well as fruits, nuts, and berries. So like raccoons, they will eat basically anything they can get their hands on. Uh, they are nocturnal, also like raccoons. And uh, they spend most of their time in small groups. Or all right, Small so groups? They, yeah. <laughs> they break off into small groups uh, for Socratic seminars. Um <laughs> And I would like to be able to put the term of venery there, but no one, despite the fact that they do spend a lot of time in groups, no one has deigned to give them a name. Hmm. Should we come up with one? Sure. Um, a crate. 
That makes sense, especially Cor- considering Tom Nook is a merchant. It's based on the video game character. <laughs> Um, or you could say a spin for Mario. Yeah, a spin. I like that. A spin at Tanuki's. Um, okay, yeah. So that's the official one. You heard it here, folks. We have that kind of clout and authority. Wouldn't that be great? If we could just make them up or change them. We talk a lot about like the the uh the success benchmarks for the podcast. I think that's the be- that's the ultimate su- success benchmark. If we can come up with a term of entry that is official. I feel like it's you if if we just get it started on like Twitter or something like that, uh it just becomes the colloquial uh or the de facto term of entry and then it it eventually gets uh cemented into law. Right now it's just a bill. Just a lonely old bill. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So they spend most of their time in small spins, foraging for food. Uh, <clears throat> a few quick facts. They are some of the only mammals to be monogamous. So they mate for life like penguins. Um, but penguins are not mammals. So it's it's not common uh, in that cl- in, in class mammalia. Um, they have their, like we said, they hibernate. They're some of the only dogs to hibernate during winter. Pandas don't even hibernate. So that's, uh, it's quite a feat. Uh, they can climb trees, dogs that can climb trees. That's also not common, uh, yeah. because they have curved little claws that allow them to grab onto branches. And that's how they find things like fruits and berries and nuts. Um, they are dogs. But they don't bark. Instead, they have high-pitched whines, like my son when he drops the latest piece of recycling that he's obsessed with. <laughs> we don't buy him toys. We hand him our recycling, and he loves it. He likes plastic bottles and stuff? Mm-hmm. Hmm. He's like, hey, we finished the coffee creamer. Why, he's just trying to get you to here. stop throwing it out. He doesn't want it to like go to the ocean. Yeah, so, so he's, he's got like... his own little recycling bin. <laughs> but, and he's like, I, I, which he, which doubles as a play, play bin. Yes. A toy bin. Um, and in Japanese folklore, the Tanuki holds a special place. It is a mis- mischievous demon named, uh, well, let's call it, the demons are called, or spirits are called yokai. Yeah. Um, in Japanese folk- folklore, uh, and it wears a little sombrero and it holds a tiny lantern and uh, also has what appears to be a sake bottle. <laughs> so uh, it's lighting the way, it's drinking a lot, and it has a funny hat. What you'll notice if you, uh, a lot of people have these uh, statues of Tanukis that are kept as good luck charms in shops, kind of like little oh, I've seen and stuff. this. Um, You'll notice a common feature of a lot of these statues is that uh, the Tanuki's uh, testicles are massive, uh, similar to like the when you have like a little Buddha and it has giant earlobes. It's a different case for the Tanuki, and that's because its uh, family jewels are magical, and they can shape shift. Into things, useful things like a blanket or a parachute or a boat. So, you know, you always want to have that a tanuki, a well endowed tanuki close by in case you are, need to be saved from some sort of natural disaster. Not an actual tanuki. You want the demon to be near you. <laughs> the the things I've been seeing. <laughs> some some of the like the, the paintings are um gratuitous there's one um, it looks like a sort of an old yeah it looks like one of the old like, art of uh tanuki defeating a group of men using only his jewels yeah uh search this at your own risk but uh or that, don't that is what they are known for in japanese folklore it's a huge deal. 
<laughs> Getting out of that. Okay. <laughs> Clearing your search history. <laughs> Let's go on to the major fact. If that's not a major fact enough. Okay, so the Tanuki is a generalist. Here's the major fact. That means they can eat a wide variety of foods. We mentioned how the raccoon in a previous episode is kind of the quintessential example of a gentle generalist. Actually, the, the best example of one is probably a rat. Rats will eat anything. But or a human. Yeah, the the but these raccoon cosplayers are even more generalist than raccoons. Um, they'll consume fruit, vegetables, eggs, shrews, hedgehogs, birds, moles, basically everything. More interestingly, they will eat frogs, including the fire-bellied toad and the European spadefoot toad. The problem with that is that toads are poisonous. If you eat them, you will get sick and you may die. Uh, our American raccoons here in the States also eat frogs, but they've developed a trick to eat around the poison. Uh, the toads secrete poison on their backs and the raccoons have learned to flip over the frogs and eat their bellies uh, and everything else except for their backs. Which is horrifying. Yeah. Not fun for the frog. That's nope. quite a wild ride, to be sure. So... Not so with the raccoon dog. Our friend the Tanuki gobbles the whole thing up and spits out the poison. Sort of. Apparently, they produce excessive amounts of saliva when they eat poisonous toads. The drool dil dilutes the poison to make it less toxic. The solution for pollution is dilution. So it dilutes this poison and I guess makes it more palatable. So I can only trace this often repeated fact uh, repeated in Wikipedia and everyone who was using Wikipedia when they made their YouTube videos. Uh, and I traced the fact to a book called Foxes, Wolves and Dogs of the World. And I don't understand how it works because you can't just drink poison and then drink a ton of water to dilute it and be OK. Uh, yeah. Unless, you know. The, unless the, I don't know that doesn't make sense, but maybe it does for the Tanuki. But in my travels on the internet, I found another interesting fact that's sort of related. Tanukis have something weird in their taste buds. So a, 2000, a 2017 study looked at the genes of the Tanuki and found that they have a ton of bitter taste receptors in their genes. So bitter taste receptors or TAS2R, TAS2R, are thought to de develop in animals and humans to help them detect when food is toxic. So if you eat something and it's super bitter, oh, that, that might be poison. If I eat a berry that's and it's very... That's why I don't like bitter things. I don't like IPAs. I don't like dark chocolate. I don't like black coffee because my, my, my taste buds are telling me it's poison. I would call an IPA really acidic rather than super. No, you add bitters to IPAs. You add things called bitters. Hmm. So the study looked at that bitter taste receptor <clears throat> uh, or the study noted that the bitter taste receptors are especially important among generalists who are more likely to encounter toxins. So things that eat one thing, May, like the panda may grow out of their bitter taste receptors. The panda already grew out of its umami taste receptors. So not only do, do generalists eat more stuff like frogs and berries that could be poisonous, they also tend to be more adventurous eaters, right? Because the panda is going to not, is only going to eat bamboo and stuff and, and a few other things. A raccoon or a tanuki is going to eat whatever it can get. Um, and part of the reason for that is that the Tanuki has to get enough food to last through the winter. If it doesn't, it dies. So it needs to eat whatever it can get. But they also found that most of these Taz to our genes are under purifying selection, which is the selective removal of genes that are harmful. 
in other words, these genes are on their way out. Um, so all but two of them are going to be eventually phased out. The two that aren't being phased out, they're called, they're under positive selections, which means they are selected to stay, right? It's something that's good. It's something that's positive. So it helps them survive. So then more Tanukis get that eventually. Mm -hmm. So one of these is TAS2R10, which is a receptor that humans have. It's able to detect 20 natural bitter compounds. So it's the it might be the one that helps you taste bitterness in coffee and stuff like that. So the other is TAS2R67, which we don't have. So we don't even know what that, what having that makes things taste like. So over the generations, they need all of the, they needed all these bitter taste receptors to not die, right? Because they're eating all this weird stuff and all of these bitter taste receptors are allowing them to, oh, nope, that's, that tastes bad. I'm not going to eat that. It's probably poisonous. Uh, but now they only need two. So maybe they figured out a way to get around toxins, like with their saliva, and get rid, getting rid of some of these receptors that makes food taste bad allows them to survive better, right? So if Because they just eat more because they can. Right. So if, if they can eat it, then it shouldn't taste bad. Um, but I also saw that... The fact that two of them are positive and the rest are uh, being selected out doesn't necessarily mean that they are less important or that bitter taste receptors are less important because the two that they have might be the better ones. Does that make sense? Like they these two might be all they need. Like the ones we have are the all, all we need. The ones they have might be all they need. They are better uh -huh. receptors uh, for their environment. So it's a mystery. I don't know it. I, I mean, the, I, it may not be a mystery to somebody else. I was trying to read a genetics, like scientific paper, and I don't know anything about genetics, except for now I know what the term selective positive selection is. Which is just natural selection, but for referring specific to specific traits and genes. Yeah. So I was trying that the, the the study concluded to say that because they're generalists, it explains why all they had all of these um, TAS to our receptors or genes because they needed them to survive. Uh, they developed to help them not eat toxic things. Um, but now they are focusing on these two other ones. So now it's the other way. The ones that are, that are able to eat more toxic things are more likely to survive. Yeah. Things that are able to eat toxic things that, and not die. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess when I able to eat means able to eat and not die. Yeah. I yeah, still don't understand sense. why like producing saliva a lot of it makes something not toxic because you're still ingesting the same amount of toxin, just diluted. Well, the only thing I could like uh, when I was reading it, they were saying, Oh, because it dilutes the toxin, but saliva is not just a dilution solution. It is a, it breaks things down. It starts the digestive process. So maybe excessive saliva starts to break things down there's a lot More of quickly. enzymes. Yeah. Because uh, you can drink a thim you can drink a thimble of bleach um just straight like a shot, and or you can dilute it in a cup of water and you're gonna have a bad time either way. Well, if you dilute it in a yeah. If you, you still just drank a thimble of bleach. If you <laughs> yes. But if you drink like a thimble of like nine parts water and one part bleach maybe you wouldn't die i wouldn't recommend it because maybe you still would but yeah <laughs> disclaimer don't drink bleach i did once i drank there was tied with bleach in a in a water bottle or a water jug 
um, in my house as a kid. And I swallowed one of those little uh, round disc peppermints with the red stripes. Uh, and it got stuck in my throat. And I grabbed that thinking it was water and chugged it and then threw up everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you had really clean, a clean digestive system after that. Mm -hmm. I was very proud of it. My digestive <laughs> system, at least. Told everybody at school how clean my digestive system was. Was it bitter? I don't remember. It will almost immediately triggered my gag reflex. Like it tasted like I think it, I think I remember tasting like soap and then just it was tied with bleach. So I think the per it was the, scented. Per, the dominant flavor was soap rather than bleach. But yeah, kids don't drink bleach. Yeah, no. Or eat toads for yeah. that matter. Uh unless you're a tanuki. Then eat all the toads you want. Maybe there's something that binds in the drool that binds to the toxins and they and drool it out. It makes it inert. Yeah. The, the, I tried to find more information about that because it sounds wacky. But I found genetics instead. That's the worst part about like following threads and finding a book. I guess like, I'll oh. either order this book and read it or I won't know this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll order this book and try to understand it. Yeah. Well, this uh, wasn't a genetics book. It was, this was just a, looks oh, like a nice foxes, dogs and foxes, wolves and wild dogs of the world by. Oh my. David Alderton published in 2004. Nice. I, maybe we should get, get it and use it as a base for all of our dogs and wild dogs and foxes. Yeah. They, Tanuki also supplements its dire diet with poo poo. So it's it's a common thing. Yeah. Maybe we're the weird ones, you know? Yeah, for real. Letting that go to waste. You know what I think it is in a civilized in civil civilization? That's what we get. For all the smog, for all the traffic. We don't we have, don't to, have eat. to eat any poop. We don't have to eat poop. Yeah. That's yeah. Although now they're doing like gut transfusions using small amounts of uh, fecal matter in like milkshakes and stuff like that. And then for people who are deficient in, in gut flora and fauna. If that's it's... not called the baby panda diet, I don't want it. I don't want it in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the baby panda diet is a French vanilla milkshake with a tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny bit of poop. Yeah. <laughs> That helps you digest your leafy greens. Yep, yep. Or your or your, or your meats. Non leafy, yeah. <clears throat> Was that is that you got anything else on the tanuki? That's all I got. All right. That was the Japanese raccoon dog on this two hundredth episode of LDT. Woo! Uh just a recap of the things that we mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Um, we, this episode is being video recorded so you can see our beautiful faces. If you go on YouTube, uh, and to our LT taxonomy, uh, the episodes going forward on video will be available to, uh, people who donate to our Patreon at LD taxonomy.com slash Patreon. But you'll still probably see clips. So feel free yeah. to subscribe. Yes, please subscribe. Um, in honor of our 200th episode, email us or tweet at us at LD Taxonomy or email us at LD Taxonomy at gmail.com. Uh, your favorite animal and the first 10 people to uh, reach out will receive a special LDT prize. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, also, I wanted to point out, we got a review. Ooh. Uh, in January. <laughs> really? We've, we've not shouted out yet. Um, this is from uh, Five Star Anise. Oh. Five Star dot Anise. Did you? Yeah. Are you sure we didn't shout it out? 
I don't think we did. If we did, then this is a second shout out for that. And if we didn't, then we're very sorry, Anise. But I, it looked, I did not recognize it when I looked at it. So, uh, so that's the Tanuki. Thanks for joining us. Are you out there in Podcastia? Hibernate during the winter if you can. Keep your sake to yourself and use your um, extremities to help not hinder like the tanuki here in life death and taxonomy yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> help not hinder yeah yeah that Dro works dro drool away the poison yeah i didn't know what the exactly what this i should, probably should have changed it on the fly there dro drool toxic what? people out of your life this year yeah there's the other thing is like, how do I incorporate this in a way that is uh, that I, that is a is good advice? Don't drink bleach, like yeah. it's Snooki. It's true. It's true. <laughs> exactly. They probably don't. I could come up with lots of things that they don't do. Yeah. And uh, don't slap people on the subway, like the Tanuki here in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Don't steal and uh, cars. don't commit insurance fraud like the Tanuki here in life. <laughs>